So guys, have a look at your left hand. Do you see anything there? No, nothing? Of course. Now I'll show you the magic. This is the left hand. Now see what has happened. Cash. Who gave me the cash? The government of India gave me the cash. Now imagine guys that all of a sudden, entire India gets cash from government of India. What is the first reaction that we are going to do? The first reaction that happens when you look at the cash is that we have an urge to spend the cash in the market. So imagine all of a sudden you get a cash from government of India. The urge is to go and spend it in the market and you start to demand your favorite mobile phone and laptop. Imagine entire India goes in the market and says, mobile phone, where are you? Laptop, where are you? But do you really think that the supply of mobile phone and laptop can be increased immediately? No. But if you give cash to everyone, the demand will rise all of a sudden. But supply of goods and services take time to increase because every producer has a capacity to produce. But if everybody gets cash and jumps in the market to buy the things, what will happen? The price of laptop, mobile phone and other goods and services will rise. This is called as inflation. Did this happen in India and across the world? Of course it happened. What was our reaction when it happened? How are we trying to control these things? Let me take you to that context briefly. So see guys, we are going to touch upon a topic which is basics of inflation and how Reserve Bank of India tries to control inflationary tendencies in the economy. Now see, during COVID 2020-21, peak of COVID, what did the government of India want? Government of India wanted that people should have more cash in their hand because during COVID when people were falling sick, when our requirements was health expenditure, you need cash in your hand. So what did Reserve Bank of India do at that time during COVID 2020? Reserve Bank of India started, you understand that Reserve Bank of India is the regulator of banking system. It's like the mom and dad of banking system. So Reserve Bank of India gave loan to State Bank of India. Reserve Bank of India gave loan to HDFC. When a central bank like Reserve Bank of India gives loan to other banks like SBI and HDFC, commercial banks, Reserve Bank of India charges a rate of interest. That rate of interest, for example, let's say was 4%. This rate of interest is called repo rate. So at 4%, Reserve Bank of India gave 30 lakh rupees to SBI and 30 lakh rupees to SDFC. Why did RBI give the money to them, liquidity to them? Because there were people who were asking for loan. These people were saying that we need loan because we have health expenses and other requirements. Now, if State Bank of India is paying 4% to RBI, State Bank of India will definitely charge 6% from public. Similarly, SDFC will also charge 6% from public. And how much loan is the public getting? 30 lakh rupees. <coughs> right? 30 lakh rupees. And you understood that whenever RBI gives loan to SBI and SDFC, they charge a rate of interest called as repo rate, which was very low at that time, 4%. So at 6%, people were getting loan. This is the story of 2020 and 21. Now when people got loan, from this 30 lakh rupees, suppose that people spent 5 lakh rupees on their health expenditure, right? 5 lakh rupees is spent. So how much money is remaining with public now? 25 lakh rupees, right? 25 lakh rupees remained with public. So year 2021 is gone. Now comes year 2022. So let us see what happened in the year 2022. In the year 2022, the moment the COVID restrictions etc are over and economy is coming back to normal, this is person number one, person number two. Both have 25 lakh rupees in their hand. Immediately after COVID, there was something called as pent up demand. What is pent up demand? Pent up demand means demand which people suppressed during COVID. But all of a sudden after COVID restriction is over, people came in the market and they said, we want to fulfill our demand. This person also says, I want to buy a house. So demand of house increased. But you understand that construction of house takes time. And during COVID construction of house was very slow. So there is only one house available. 2020 post COVID price of the house 20 lakh rupees. And this is the seller of the house. People got easy cash from banks. So this person comes to this seller, this person also comes and says, I want to buy the house. Seller says, but I have only one house. Both of them are saying, yeah, but we are ready to pay. Immediately seller said, what will be the reaction of the seller? Immediately seller will increase the price of the house. So from 20 lakh, the price of the house might become 24 lakhs. So now what has happened? The price of this house becomes 24 lakh. So if there will be a new construction, New construction after 2022, the price will start from 24 lakhs. And who will suffer because of this? 
people from middle class, they won't be able to afford this house. And why did this happen? This happened because people had extra cash in their hand. And why did they have extra cash? Because during COVID, the Reserve Bank of India was giving loans to SBI and SDFC kind of commercial banks at low rate of interest called as repo rate. Right. So now imagine that today everybody has extra cash. So prices will rise. What would Reserve Bank of India do to control this inflation? And I'm telling you a real scenario. Actually, it happened. So what would Reserve Bank of India do if they want to control? The first thing they will do is they will next time if SDFC and SBI, they come to RBI to take loan. What will SDF, RBI do? RBI will increase the repo rate. So next time when SBI comes, SDFC comes and they say, can you give me loan RBI? Because people want loan. RBI will say this time the repo rate will be 7%. Right, 6.57%. See, repo rate increased to 7% in our example, which means now if this person wants to take loan from SBI, the rate of interest cannot be 6%. It will be 7 plus 2, let's say 9%. And this person will also get the loan at 9%, which means people will become reluctant to take fresh loans. So one of the methods through which Reserve Bank of India can control the flow of cash in the economy, liquidity in the economy is increase the repo rate. So when repo rate increases, when repo rate increases, flow of liquidity in the economy is controlled. So imagine guys that earlier this was the money which was coming to my hand through these two banks. But now RBI increased the repo rate, which means now this much money is not coming to my hand. Only this much is coming. So will I demand more goods and services? No, I will demand less goods and services. So this is how inflation is being controlled. There are other ways of controlling inflation also. Let me tell you two more ways. Have a look at this, please. This concept is called as CRR and SLR. So first is cash reserve ratio and other is statutory liquidity ratio. So what is CRR and SLR? See guys. Now imagine through this picture, please, that there is this bank called SDFC bank. These are depositors. What are depositors doing? Depositors are depositing 100 rupees in SDFC bank. Let's imagine all this. So depositors are depositing 100 rupees. The moment 100 rupees comes in this bank, what is the tendency of the bank? The tendency of SDFC is to give entire 100 rupees as loan. So suppose SDFC gave this entire 100 rupees as loan to me. What will I do with this 100 rupees? I'm going to spend this 100 rupees to buy refrigerator, AC, etc. And I will return the money of SDFC after six months. So SDFC gave the loan to me. But suppose tomorrow these depositors come back to SDFC and tell SDFC return my money. Now SDFC will say that, sorry, I have given it as loan. So what will happen in the economy? This bank might collapse now because people will lose confidence. And everybody will run to the bank and say, bank, give me my cash. Because this news spreads very fast that when depositors went to bank to take their cash, bank said, I don't have cash. This concept is called as bank run. So what is bank run? When depositors deposit cash, and if the bank gives entire cash as loan to somebody, and if the depositors go to the bank and they say that they want their cash back, bank will say, I don't have your cash. So this creates negativity in the economy and every invest, everybody who deposited money will come to the bank and say, I also want my cash back. So when all the depositors come at one time, it is called bank run. So what is the rule that RBI has created in India? RBI has created two rules in India that whenever depositors deposit 100 rupees with SDFC, for example, Immediately, Reserve Bank of India says that SDFC, please take out 4.5% out of whatever deposits are there and give it to RBI. This 4.5% goes in the piggy bank of RBI. This is SDFC's money only, but it is kept in a piggy bank with RBI. It's like a child is getting pocket money and putting it in piggy bank. And who takes care of the piggy bank? Parents. So this 4.5 rupees out of 100 is kept with RBI. RBI does not pay any interest rate on this. RBI keeps it safe. Now, <clears throat> this 4.5% out of total deposit is called CRR, cash reserve ratio. And this has to be kept with RBI. Now, other than this, there is one more concept called as statutory liquidity ratio. What is SLR? So out of 100 rupees deposit that has happened, 18% of this deposit SDFC bank has to use to buy gold or government bonds. Why gold and government bonds? Because gold and government bonds are considered to be highly liquid and very safe. 
So RBI tells SDFC that whenever you get 100 rupees, first you should give 4.5 rupees to RBI as your deposits. That's your money, but it is with RBI. And remaining out of 100 rupees, you have to calculate 18% out of 100. Use that 18% to buy government bonds and gold. And this government bond and gold will remain with HDFC only in its piggy banks. If bad situation comes and SDFC bank requires funds all of a sudden, it can sell the gold and government securities. That is why it can be useful. So now, if you calculate something here that suppose 100 rupees are deposited in SDFC and I want to ask you a question that out of 100 rupees, when 4.5 rupees CRR and 18 rupees SLR is gone, how much is the loan giving capacity of this bank? So 100 minus 4.5 minus 18, this is the loan giving capacity. 100 minus 4.5 minus 18, which is 77.5. Which means if depositors deposit 100 rupees in this bank, this bank's 4.5 plus 18 rupees is gone. Only 77 rupees can be given as loan, which is safe. If suppose Reserve Bank of India knows that these days in the economy, people have too much cash. And Reserve Bank of India wants that people should not have too much cash. What will Reserve Bank of India do? Reserve Bank of India will say that HDFC please give more money as CRR. So instead of 4.5, please give 10% as CRR. So out of 100 rupees, please give 10 rupees to RBI as CRR. And instead of 18%, for example, suppose that RBI keeps it as 30%. So what will happen? Every time 100 rupees will be deposited in the bank, from that 100 rupees, 30 plus 10, 40 rupees will go to RBI and bank will have only 60 rupees to offer as loan. Which means if CRR and SLR increases, what happens? The loan giving capacity of the bank comes down. And during inflation, what happens? People have too much of cash. So if Reserve Bank of India wants to control inflation, what will Reserve Bank of India do? Reserve Bank of India will keep CRR very high, like 10%, SLR very high, like 13%, theoretically speaking. So what did we learn? We learned that there are few things which RBI can do if RBI wants to control the inflation. First, we learned that RBI can increase repo rate. This will demotivate the people from taking loan. You see now, costly loan. Second is CRR can be increased. If CRR increases, banks like SBI and SDFC has to deposit more money with RBI, which means they can give less loan. So CRR can be increased and SLR can also be increased. These three things can be increased. Whenever Reserve Bank of India uses policies like this, increase in repo rate, increase in CRR, increase in SLR, these kind of policies are called as quantitative monetary policy. And quantitative monetary policy is very often used by RBI to control inflation.